Ding, 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 ding. Welcome back ding, to my giant ass water bottle. Hey, I'm on some thirst. I've been underwater all day. I'm very thirst. Welcome back to the Jenna Julian podcast, where we are above water, no longer beneath the surface of the ocean. I'm not a duck. It's a good game. I'm having a good time. Don't this, judge me. This week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, guys. Squarespace makes the process of creating your beautiful website uh, a seamless reality. Okay. Uh, they have 24 7 customer support, uh, plenty of templates and ways to make it your own website. Right now, go to squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. You get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Guys, if you're intimidated about starting a website, Squarespace is the way to go. They will help you. Also, guys, brought to you by Quip. It is a new, awesome, convenient toothbrush at an affordable price. Starts at just $25, and it's the sleekest design you've ever seen for an electric toothbrush. It's not clunky or big. It's nice. It looks like it was made by Apple. Right now, you can get your first refill pack for free at getquip.com. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash Jenna Julian. Or click the link in our description. Thank you, sponsors. Gracias. El sponsors. <laughs> I don't, I, don't I majored in Spanish. That's correct. <laughs> I don't <clears throat> think that's right. Um, it is. Yo soy peligro. Yo soy peligro. Well, we are recording this a little bit early this week because I'm going to be gone. No. But actually, by the time you're watching this, I'll be back. <laughs> Hey, don't worry. I'm coming back today. Oh, I wish. I know. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to be going to uh, Minneapolis to do stuff for Super Saturday Night and the Super Bowl and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, But I'm going to be gone for a couple days, so. I miss my aunt. So is Ad. I'm going to have Ad time without you. You're going to be so jealous. Not okay. I'm going to take so many pictures of me and my hamster just having a great time. Can you send them to me, though? Are you going to cry? Yeah. I would cry too. <laughs> Cries in cold. <laughs> I'll cry the second he comes out. I'll just start crying because he's just so handsome and I love him so much. God, he's such a good goddamn boy. <laughs> such a good damn boy. What do we got today, Julie? Um, so I thought that we would do um, a weird things podcast again, but then as I like looked for things and got a lot of suggestions from one of you, uh, they kind of turned into just unsolved mysteries. So I think we'll call this unsolved mysteries with Jenna and Julian, right? This They're will be like, like missing people, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, unsolved mysteries, some of them are not missing, like the bodies were found, but just the way that everything happened is very confusing or there's not a lot of like, nothing's it's conclusive scared. about these cases. It's going to be a scary podcast. Quickly. Um, and, and what's cool is... Quickly, I want to shout out Invented, at Invented by Jenna. Her name's Kayla on Twitter. She gave us a whole thread of her favorite Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, and we only got about, I don't even know how far down. She has so many more in that thread. Oh, my God. So if, if we fly through these, we can just pop her thread open but um, and look and look. at There's, like, so many of them. I'm and it dates back to, like, 2017. So thank you, Kayla, for all these suggestions. We are going to go through some of these Unsolved Mysteries. I've gathered them. I did a little research, and I... Um, put some information on paper so where we could talk about them. Basically, they're just unsolved mysteries, and we're going to talk about them, give our opinions of what we think happened, what we think went down. It's not quite conspiracy theories. It's not quite weird things. It's somewhere in the middle. I was a little bit scared as I, re- as I was compiling these. Some of these are a little creepy. Do you have a candle or a flashlight? I'm scared. It's dark in here. It's very dark. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, I feel safe now. You good? With the flashlight on your phone in this bright, bright light room. Yes, I feel better. You are welcome. Thank you. The first one up is the Jameson family. Yeah, so Julian did the research for these. He told me what they were, but I don't really know what they are yet. So I'm I'm scared and excited. I'll just sort of read them. I'm just like everybody listening. I'm scared and excited. Grab a blanket. Ah, I don't have one. I need a snack, too. (laughs) Uh, I got a lot of this from Reddit for this one. So Bobby, Sherilyn, uh, Bobby and Sherilyn Jamison were husband and wife, and they vanished in October of 2009 with their daughter, Madison. Uh, 
The family was on a trip, supposedly, according to their family, to buy a new home uh, and were reported missing days after leaving on said journey. Uh, Their remains were found four years later with inconclusive results. So that's a short story. The long story. What does that usually mean when it says inconclusive results? Like they they're not able to tell if it was a homicide or like how they died or they don't know how they died. They don't know what the cause of death was. Yeah, they don't know the cause of death. Uh, by the time they've discovered the remains, a lot of times you can't like run toxology. You don't know if they had drugs in them, right? Like, well, yeah, you said four years later, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but basically, they they can't tell how they died. Yeah. Okay. So a couple things. Uh, one is they were the, assumed to be, uh, meth users cause they were emaciated. They oftentimes had delusions, uh, their family, their family backed up that, uh, that fact and, and, uh, the, 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 they were, you know, kind of like just out there with what they would say. Uh, Bobby actually was, I think. Um, he told someone in his church, I believe, that he was having delusions of hauntings. Um, he was quoted saying that he was reading a satanic Bible and that he was seeking special bullets to do battle with spirits. Stop. And a lot of the stuff was kind of viewed in, in retrospect as like cult language. So yes, that they, yes, they were likely meth users. Yes, they likely were high experiencing weird delusions, um, but it is possible that there is some sort of cult thing involved, which actually um, circles back to I, their mo- It didn't specify if it was his mom or her mom, but one of their moms, Sherilyn or Bob's mom, um, had an interesting theory that basically was backing up the cult thing that it was that they were put on some sort of cult hit list. And as they went out to look for their house or do whatever they said they were going to do, that's when they were offed by said cult leader or cult murderers or whatever um really quickly though why would a cult leader want to kill their cult members well maybe they had maybe they had done something are they barking i don't know i heard a bark i don't know maybe they had done something i don't know who knows but just a couple facts right so uh three or i think three or four days after three days after their their disappearance uh their truck was found and their dog was in the truck alive thankfully uh Almost dead, malnutrition and everything, but the dog was in the truck for three days, survived. Also in the truck was $32,000 in cash, car keys, GPS, and both of their phones. On their phones were these pictures, actually just that picture. That was Madison, their daughter. Of their daughter. Okay, mm-hmm. it's just a picture of how old is she? She looks like five. She or was. Six. Uh, yeah, I actually don't know. She was young. She was probably uh, under eight years old. But this was it's taken. Just, it's a picture of her sitting in the woods. Uh, you can sort of see it. If you look this up, you, you'll find it. But basically, it's it, she looks a little bit in distress in this picture. Let me see. She's, it's not the greatest picture. I think the family had a problem with that picture being released to the public because it looked like the daughter was mistreated or she was upset or something. It's not the it's not a happy family picture of the daughter. She looks a little, like, upset. Well, yeah, in the picture to the right, she looks close to the same age. But has her two front teeth, and the left one, she doesn't have her front teeth. That could be just normal. She lost her teeth. That could be like three months apart. She could lose her little yep. teeth. But other than that, I don't see anything why they wouldn't. She just looks like a little girl. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't look happy. But again, yeah, she, photos of kids oftentimes look upset, right? She's like, got her arms crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so for uh, three and a half years, three and a half or four years, they went undiscovered. Uh, they didn't know where their bodies were. They didn't know what happened. There was a whole entire search party that went through the land of which they were going, which was actually private land, which was part of the theory that they were going to invest in a house. That's what they, That was kind of their alibi. What state was – this is in the United States? This was in the United States. I actually don't um, – I had it earlier. I'm trying to remember. Um, I uh, The woods. It doesn't matter. I can look I'm it up. Curious. Yeah, I, it's it's kind of – Whatever. Anyway, um, they had said that they were going to invest in property, hence the cash or whatever, uh-huh. right? Uh, and I think that was one of the alibis that they had or that they their family was backing up or whatever. Who invests in property in cash, though? This is 2009. It's not like it's this 2009, is And it's, they were driving out into this private, privately owned land. Okay. A whole search party was conducted. 
swept the whole hill, swept miles and miles outside of the radius of the car where it was found, nothing. How far was the car found from their bodies? They didn't have their bodies for four years. So four years later, miles and miles away. Oh, far away from the car. Yeah, there's actually a map where you can see it triangulated of uh -huh. where everything is. Uh, a hunter found three skeletons lying perfectly side by side, face down. The Stop. DNA confirmed via you know tests that that was them. It was all three of them. Uh, and so that's kind of where the story ends. There's a lot of theories on it. There's the cult theory. There's the theory that, uh, and there was a bolt, there was, sorry, not, there was a hole in Bobby's skull, but, uh, it wasn't just like, you know, a hole in Bobby's skull bullet. It wasn't like that conclusive. There were a lot of reasons that there could have been a hole. Um, uh, there could have been wildlife eating at the corpses. There could have been rotting. There's a whole number of things that could have contributed to it. Also, it wasn't a perfectly bulletly shaped, bullet shaped hole. And also, it was four years later. Mm -hmm. So, so many different types of, you know, breakdown could have happened to the human skull. Uh, but there was a, there was a hole in Bobby's skull. There was also, um, I think, backed up by her, their family. Cher, Sherilyn had a gun that was not in the truck, meaning that. There could have been a gun shot to his head, and it could have been Sherilyn's. Again, very kind of foggy. I found a theory um, that was interesting on Reddit by Pass the Mash. This is three years ago posted to Reddit. Um, one, he was killed. They were killed by a sociopath with a rifle. Um Overall, a rifle though. Yeah, I'll, I'll read the, the whole, I'll just read this whole comment. Overall, I can't see a killer wasting his or her time accompanying the Jamesons through the woods, which would be necessary if we envision most traditional methods, pistol, knife, strangulation. But I can see an evil individual doing this as a random killing, a homicide of opportunity. Perhaps someone with a rifle spotted them from a distance. They were just going hiking and decided to enact some sort of sniper fantasy. Hmm, maybe. I, but that wouldn't explain why their bodies are laid out next to each other. Yes, and there all. It also should be noted that there are mudslides in the area. So the reasons, the reason that Hunter probably stumbled across the 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 skeletons laying on top of the ground is probably because the mudslides, like washed away what they were buried underneath. It's possible. Yeah, because they possible. wouldn't just be laying there for four years with no one noticing them. Likely, that's possible. Yeah, though. if they're that far into the woods. Mm hmm. Um. Number two, I don't, I don't love number one, honestly, because I can't see taking a six-year-old hike, six-year-old on a plus or minus three-mile hike, but when you're a nefarious killer guiding the Jamesons at gunpoint or when the Jamesons' parent, parents interested in exploring the woods, you don't want to undertake that journey with Madison. It can only lead to misery for everyone involved. So this leads me to consider a grim possibility that I haven't seen anyone else on this thread mention, namely, um, be as vague as possible. That Madison died on top of the mountain near the truck and was carried into the woods by her parents who decided to join her in the internal rest once they arrived at the spot where the bodies could lie together very privately in peace. So those are two theories I found that were just interesting because obviously you have the, you have the theory that the, like they, the, Sherilyn had a gun, offed Bobby, and then whatever else happened. Or then you have the theory of the, a random killing, but then you have the suspicions of like the cult thing, which is really weird to me. But you have to remember that they were meth users. Yeah, I feel like my, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think the point that no one, even if they had that cash of the whole, we're going to invest in land as sort of a decoy to their families that they're, you know, they owe somebody money or they're in some kind of trouble. Like, I mean, it is possible that somebody wanted to get them as far as from land, you know, where people travel and hang out at as possible. Three miles is is pretty far, you know, Yeah. to walk them in there or to carry them in there. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's more plausible that whatever he was reading or like into, even if she had a gun, he probably used the gun. If it's him, if she's not into that stuff and it's just him, but they're both meth users, they convince each other that they're going to go do some satanic shit in the woods and they decide to all die together. It could have been something planned or weird like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it's the laying, the laying parallel to each other. I mean, if, if a hunter or a bad person with a gun kills a random group of people. Well, if somebody killed someone with a rifle, you, there would be like forensic evidence of that, right? 
uh, even if it's think, four years later. You'd think that something on their on their skeletons would lead to point to something like that. And, yeah. You know, like it's three years. It's not a hundred years, right? right? This thing didn't break down like a, a skeleton does over years and years and years. It was three or four, three and a half, four years. I don't know. I mean, that one for me is like. That's so sad. It's sad. But the, the wild card for me is like, it's like the drug use. Yeah. You know, because it could have been any number of things. They could have even been involved in selling or dealing drugs and couldn't, could have gotten mixed up with the wrong people, hence tried to escape and then got caught or something Yeah. by their well, leaders I mean, or the boss the, or whatever. I guess the weird thing about, you know, even if they were like, all right, we're going to go out to the woods and mommy and daddy are going to kill themselves and we're going to take you with us. Like, why would they leave their dog and all that cash in the car? You know? If this was someone that wanted that money and was, you know, expecting them to give them money or something, why wouldn't they take the cash or like... Well, the the car was described as if they had left in a hurry. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So either they were having crazy delusions and running away from nothing. That's possible. Or they were really running away from something dangerous that caught them. Yeah, it's really sad. It is sad. Well, I don't have a solution for that one. I guess we'll just leave that one unsolved. Do you have... Well, yeah. I mean, if it's unsolved, it's unsolved. We're well, not going to sit here We're not going to sit here and solve it. <laughs> we're just giving our two cents. Um, That's just really sad. It is sad. This next one is gnarly. You ready? Well, what's your best guess? Oh, no, I'm not done. That's sad. I don't have a best guess. I just think it's... I think it's such a wild card with the drug use. I think they were... The cash to me makes me feel like they were involved in drugs. Yeah. Who has $32,000 of cash laying around? Nobody. In 2009. In 2009, but also just like, and, and supposedly she had a gun, right? Oh, and there was another point of like, um, Sherilyn would often write letters to Bob of like anger and like frustration. So there was definitely strife between the two and the mother confirmed this. But that's not really pointing to anything, right? That's just kind of like normal. Maybe not normal, but. There's I, no, there's no, that doesn't lead to anything. That's just, I don't know. Maybe they really were planning on investing in property and then they got in a big methy meth fight in the car and went and killed each other. But my thing is, well, as a meth user. Well, girl just died of exposure out there. It's possible. You know, like if, if well, they got in a fight or something. What if they were like chasing some delusion or some fake thing? I mean, I've never she... done meth. I don't, I don't really know. Well, what that it's, drug so, does to you. Here's a theory. Okay. They were getting in a fight. The, the, the problem with this is like I have a hard time believing a meth user or two meth users, two heavy meth users would leave behind cash. That's that's their ticket to the next high. You don't leave behind cash. Unless you, you're planning on dying or, or something or it's over or you're having the weirdest trip ever. Not trip, but you're just going through a weird... What do you call it when you're on meth? You're high as fuck and you, you like, you, you think everything's over. And so like you have, to, you must have to be crazy high out of your mind on that stuff to leave behind $32,000 of cash because that's your ticket to staying high, right? Don't meth users feel like they'll do anything for their next? Well, yeah, I think we can all agree that it wasn't their intention to leave their money in the car and go die. So you think that they were having a crazy trip. They went out in a hurry. I'm just saying it's possible. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying and to paint this in a picture. Fight. But they had and the daughter with them. Yeah. It's possible that they killed each other or a murder-suicide and the little girl, like, didn't was so far away and in the woods that she sort of just stayed with their bodies and didn't know what to do. And, and just laid down and next to them? died of exposure, of thirst, hunger, so you, exhaustion. Hmm. So the daughter might have died after instead of before possible it's possible that they all died of different causes yeah i agree if one overdosed if, and then it died in the woods and then the the father killed himself or you yeah, know what, what if I mean? the mother killed the father then she died because she was high on meth and the fucked up and then the, the girl then died they, last or something like you said yeah it's just really sad i feel like oh man i could never be a police officer <laughs> it'd be too sad all the time I just feel bad for that little girl, man. Your parents are drug users and... Mm. Sucks. That one's sad. 
It's an unfortunate one. That one's really sad. This one, the next one is pretty fucked. This is uh, the case of Elisa Lamb. I know what this one is. Source is Wikipedia. There's videos of mm-hmm. the... Yeah. I'm going to get to that. Okay. Lisa Lamb was found dead in the water tank on top of the Cecil, then called the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles in 2013. It's five years ago, guys. Security footage of her before she went missing was her pushing multiple buttons, peering in and out as if she was looking for someone and motioning a very strange way as if she's talking to someone in and out of the elevator and in the hallways. Uh, hotel guests, this, hopefully you're not eating right now. Hotel guests began to complain about the taste and color of the water, which led to the discovery of the body inside the water tank on top of the hotel. There were complaints that it tasted weird and that it was coming out black. She had bipolar disorder, which is a huge, huge point in this story. Um, but many people claim the video was altered before being released, which is Another interesting point. Um, there's sort of an account here that is a little bit long and lengthy, but I think it's important to the story, so I'm going to read it. Okay. okay, It's about the security footage. In the clip, the camera is at, um, at one of the elevator's cab's rear corner, and it looks down from the ceiling, offering a view of not just its interior, but the hallway outside. It's pretty grainy. The timestamp at the bottom is obscured, and at certain points, her mouth is pixelized. And this is the video that was released from the hotel to the public. At the start, Lamb enters uh, in red zippered hooded sweatshirt over a gray t-shirt with black shorts and sandals. She enters from the left and goes to the control panel, appears, I think they're referring to the buttons right on the elevator, appears to select several floors and then steps back into the corner. After a few seconds during which the door fails to close, she steps up to it, leans forward, so her head is through the door, looks in both directions, then quickly steps back in, backing up to the wall and then to the corner near the control panel. The door remains open. She walks to do it again uh, and stands in the in the doorway, leaning on the side. Suddenly, she steps out into the hall, then to her side, then back in, looking side to side, then back out, then back inside the elevator. And just for a few seconds, when she steps sideways, she's mostly invisible behind the wall outside the elevator, and she has her back to the outside. The door remained open. Her arm can be seen going up to her head. And then she turns to re-enter the cab, putting both hands on the side of the door, and then goes to the control panel, panel, presses many more buttons, some more than once, and then returns to the wall, where she is partially obscured. Then she puts both of her hands over her ears briefly as she walks back to the uh, section of the wall that she had been standing against before. The door remains open. She turns to her right, begins rubbing her forearms together, and waves her hands out to her sides with her palms flat, fingers outstretched, while bowing forward slightly and rocking gently. This can all be seen through the door, which remains open. As she backs to the wall again and walks away to the left, it closes. So she, she has this whole sort of weird encounter with herself, where she's walking in and out of the elevator, checking down the hallway, looking up, looking down, raising her arms, pressing buttons, going into the corner, and repeating over and over and over. And it's all on camera. But the door is not closed. But the door will not close. She then walks away, and then the door closes. Creepy. Absolutely creepy. The fact that that's on video is creepy. Yeah, that's what I was saying in the video. You can find those videos on YouTube. <clears throat> It's I pretty, have screenshots of the videos. I saw some of it online as I was doing that. Yeah, it's pretty famous video footage at this point. There were, there were the a toxology, you know, and, and the autopsy had no evidence of drugs or sexual assault or suicide. She was found in the water tank floating aside her belongings and clothes. And that's that's fucking it. Wasn't there, like, it's incredibly difficult to get up to that water yes, tank? Yes, sorry. Yes, good call. There. Okay, so uh, the water tank's really high up. The, the lid to the top of the water tank is incredibly heavy. It right. usually requires two people to get, you know, access to it. There was no ladder found, and it's very high. Like, you can't climb this thing. Right. Um, that, that was a good point. The, the water tank itself was mounted on cinder blocks, so the water tank isn't flush on the ground. Right. It's, it's elevated. So getting on top of this thing seems like uh, really, really hard and improbable for one young woman, at least. Without help. Yeah. Um, yeah, good Good point. I forgot to mention that. Um, and again, no ladder, no, no any sort of structure where they could have assumed that she got up from. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, 
maybe this is an unpopular opinion because I'm not buying any bipolar. Like, even if she was diagnosed with bipolar, depending what kind of bipolar she had, I, like, it, you do, you can have manic episodes, but it's not this, like, you get into an elevator and the elevator doesn't close. That, to me, is out of the ordinary. Well, what do you have to... What, what I agree. Devil's advocate here, though. Why would her mouth be pixelized? Well, Pixelated, that's, rather. That, so some of this seems pretty... A little creepy, almost ghost story y, but then some of that feels like a cover up. Yeah, like what could could there could there have been like because again, they said specifically the wall she was standing against made her made it so she like part of her was not visible to the camera. Is it possible that there was another camera angle showing a whole other side of this interaction with maybe another person that was never released? Maybe. And when they blurred her mouth, that was her saying someone's name that they could have maybe discovered upon reading that tape over and over even still though like how did she get up in that water tower how she got up in the water tower is is weird it's weird man i don't the fact that like this is the last footage of her right is in the elevator mm -hmm. isn't that hotel also known to be relatively haunted i i don't know they've since changed their name i know that there was a whole bunch of lawsuits after this happened both from her family and the guests of the hotel right um, I'm sure, yeah, if you think so, I'm sure you're right. I, I just recall yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't look into the hotel, but I'm sure, you know, I spent only so much time on each of these stories, so I'm sure there's a lot more information. And that goes for all these stories. Like, if I miss something or we got a little something wrong, I apologize. No, it's okay. I don't have someone the, doing this. I just, the last time that I had watched that footage, it was, like, really creepy. Mm -hmm. To the point where it's like, okay, she is, could totally be diagnosed with bipolar, but this doesn't read bipolar behavior to me. This reads like there's something real creepy going on to me. Well, bipolar is one thing, but what I mean, having a manic episode where you're seeing your your would you call it delusional when you're that's what, why I said it depends what kind of bipolar she has, but it's not always. Are there certain types of bipolar where you see things that aren't there? Mm, that's not bipolar. More like schizophrenia. Yeah, that's what I think too. And I know nothing. I don't know. You guys correct me. It's been a long time since I was in school, but I didn't think so. It's just more of the of like a a manic sort of you're you're on a high and mm -hmm. you, and then you crash sort of, mm -hmm. and then you have depressive episodes. It's really bad. Yeah, no, I, I, I know, I know. I've seen the behavior. It doesn't seem like well, a, a manic episode for a schizophrenic though is sometimes delusions. The yes. That kind of thing. But, but they didn't mention that. They not 100% sure. Well, she, maybe she wasn't diagnosed with it. But it, that it's possible that she was just hallucinating and having, you know, seeing things, hearing voices, talking to people that weren't there. But how did she get in that water tower? How did she get in the water tower? The biggest mystery for me is, like, if there's, like... And the lid was on, the right? The lid was like on. Like, she was in it. She was in that drowned, thing. Drowned, dead, and the lid was on. She was in that thing. So if we're really stretching here, she might have been talking to a ghost that was threatening her. If she didn't do something, she was going to end up dead. And the ghost's way of killing her was putting her in the water tank, right? Like that's the creepy kind of unknown part. Because if she was just found dead or she had jumped off the building or, or went missing, I mean, a lot of that you could sort of like, you know, you could sort of rationalize that she might have been killed in any sort of normal way. But to have her be dead inside this water tank, floating next to her clothes and belongings, why next to? So why she wasn't was, she wearing her she clothes? She was naked? Yeah. And so everything, what do you mean was next to her? Like next floating to her in the Floating next to her. Okay. That makes no sense. And the fact that the, the investigative unit did not find a single piece of evidence pointing to the fact that she could have hoisted herself up. I mean, if she got in that water tank, I'm sure she could have done it with help. Right? Like, it doesn't seem like she just... She, it, what I'm saying is it doesn't seem like she got into a place where it was otherwise impossible physically to get into. It's a water tank. Yes, it's very unlikely and really hard to believe and almost impossible for one person to get themselves in there without any ladder or something like that. But the tank itself, with the right assistance, can be entered. Right? Of course. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the water tank looked like, but like where I grew up, there was a place with big water tanks like that 
it's it's a sheer like face like it's metal you can't climb up it and even if someone had like put me on their hands and like cheerleader threw me into the air it's still difficult to get in there and there if there's no ladder you know what i mean those things are built like that for a reason yeah it's just hard to believe someone who's having such a weird episode like yelling potentially at themselves right or someone that we don't see mm -hmm. is cognitive cognitive enough to get themselves so physically you know demanding well yeah i imagine some people's through. argument is like that's how she got herself up there is because maybe she was having a manic episode or you know so she was capable of she was capable of anything i don't know hmm. to me the whole thing just seems really 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 creepy mm, it is creepy because it's like it's it's almost too bizarre to even be like a murder it's like a it's the weirdest creepiest thing ever yeah i just i don't know that, that the fact that the door didn't close out, the whole thing yeah that's that's to me is like there's maybe there's not even anything going on with her at all like, mm. she's, like, rocking back and forth. There's weird Maybe stuff happening. Maybe she's just, like, dealing with something that, going on in the hotel. That elevator door wasn't closing. Yeah. That's not her. That has nothing to do with her. And she uh -huh. just keeps walking in and out and rocking back and forth and, like, rubbing her arms together. No, thank you. I don't know, man. All of that seems so creepy to me. Like, ghost stuff to me. But there aren't, like, there's almost no... Aside from people saying that a, a demon attacked them and stuff, isn't it? There's very few times when ghosts have actually hurt people. Is that? Am I making that up? I thought that was a thing. No, I think I think you're right. I think there's le I think there's far more accounts of people interacting with ghosts that haven't been hurt by them than there are of people interacting and getting physically hurt. Yeah, like people have said that you ghosts. know they've gotten scratches and stuff from ghosts and demons, yeah. but like a ghost actually hurting someone. I thought was or like them. really, really uncommon or yeah, killing them. I agree. I agree. If, if even possible. Well, I mean, I could be up all night looking at this story and finding more um, facts about it because it's really interesting. Yeah, that stuff's, again, just really <clears throat> all the way sad though. How old yeah, was she? Yeah, it is sad. She was young. Look at her. Maybe late 20s, early 30s. Hmm. That footage is just... It's so much. Let's talk about Squarespace. Julian. <laughs> what? I wasn't going to transition. I felt like it was. Anyway, if you're building your website and you're up all night. I try not to be disrespectful. Either. Trying to uh, build your website and you need help. It, 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 the thing about Squarespace having 24-7 customer support is the people who build websites, at least what I think, the people who build websites who are entrepreneurs, who are their own bosses, who are working from home a lot of times, they're not working traditional hours. And even if you are working traditional hours, right, this point goes both ways. If you're working at 12 noon or if you're working at 12 midnight, it doesn't matter. You need help building a website seven. because it's, it's freaking hard to build a website, not with Squarespace. Okay, they make it easy and any little question, any little piece of information, any tweak, any template, coding, whatever you need help with, 24-7, they're there for you guys. That's one of the amazing things about Squarespace, award-winning customer support, 24-7. That's my favorite thing about Squarespace. We currently have a website with Squarespace, I told you. Uh, and you know what? It's one of those things where in your brain, it's a lot more daunting to start the website than it actually is with Squarespace. They make it very easy. They make it that you can have an online store. You can sell products or services online. They allow you to man your, manage your products, orders, and inventory very easily. It's an all-in-one platform that you, need, that you can use to run your business. It's amazing. Okay. With the customer support, think it, dream it, make it with Squarespace by going to squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And for our other sponsor this week, guys, Quip, how often do you use your toothbrush for way too long or do you keep forgetting to buy a new one or are you just lazy? Honestly, 75% of us don't replace our bristles every three months. That's why you need a new electric toothbrush that is called Quip. It is backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals. It will be love at first brush and better oral hygiene at an affordable price. It starts at just 25 bucks, and it's the sleekest design you've ever seen for an electric toothbrush. Um, you don't have to worry about forgetting to replace the brush heads because they get delivered to you on schedule, delivered right to your front door. They have the little refill packs with the fresh bristles so you can keep your mouth nice and fresh, especially when you're making good transitions into the sponsors. 
right now when you go to getquip.com, that's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash Jenna Julian, you'll get your first refill pack for free with an electric Quip toothbrush. Check it out, guys. It's a great product, and um, it's, it's just simple. A lot of times, you just need to simplify things. Quip does that, okay? Check it out. Click the link in the description. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. I just have a clarification from this story. Mm-hmm. You can have hallucinations with bipolar. It didn't specify bipolar one or two. Uh, you can have them as visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, or kinesthetic. Uh, hallucinations are more likely to be auditory than visual in people with bipolar disorder. You're more likely to have hallucinations if you experience ex- severe mood swings. Hallucinations and other psychotic symptoms are also more likely to happen with those with schizophrenia rather than those with bipolar disorder. That's why people with bipolar disorder who have hallucinations can be incorrectly diagnosed. Got it. So this says that it, it auditory hallucinations are more common than visual ones. So it is possible she was hallucinating either visual or sound or both. Mm -hmm. And that if she had maybe had some other hallucinations in the past, (coughs) she could have been incorrectly diagnosed with schizophrenia, but typically someone wouldn't diagnose you with schizophrenia Mm -hmm. if you just had bipolar. Mm -hmm. It's true. But it's also not it's safe to say that just because she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder that she was not also schizophrenic and was undiagnosed. That is also possible. Mm-hmm. Either way, doesn't explain how she got in that water tower. But I no. did want to clarify. Thank you for that. That's important. All right. Uh, the next one is called The Man from Torrid. This is so lit. This, source, is, this is my favorite shit. Right the source here. from this is uh, AnomalyInfo.com. Anomalyinfo.com. <laughs> Not our sponsor. This week. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll just kind of read you the. It was it, 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 like it's this kind of written very story like. So I'm, I'm going to read it as is because I feel like it does uh, the best job of painting the picture. On a hot day in July 1954, officials at the Tokyo airport in Japan were confronted with a puzzling problem. A traveler from Europe with a passport for a country called Torrid, T A U R E D, as the As the traveler looked European, not Japanese, claimed his country was in Europe and carried money from several European countries, the airport officials felt that there had to be a simple explanation why they didn't know what this country was on his passport, so they pulled him over to a room and started asking questions. As they tried to locate the information on Torrid, the traveler started to become angry. He stated this was his third trip this year to Japan for his company, that he'd been making such trip for the past five years, and he couldn't understand what the hell this delay was for approving a trip that he's taken so many times. But the company he claims to be coming to visit said they, the officials said they didn't know what it was. And they couldn't even find proof that the company was a thing, let alone that he claimed to work for it. Uh, The hotel also claimed that he did not have reservations or did they know who he was. He could speak Japanese very well among other languages. He was seemingly further proof of his previous contact um, with Japan. With Japan, he spoke French natively and was genuinely shocked that he could not find his country on a world map presented to him by the officials. He stated that his country was located where the map showed the principle of Andorra along with parts of France and Spain said that Torred had existed for almost a thousand years, so it should have been on the map. Not surprisingly, he soon demanded to talk to government officials uh, Government officials to clear the matter up. Since he couldn't be detained at the airport's room overnight, they put him in a, in a room at a nearby hotel that was guarded overnight. Two immigration officials were set to guard the room. The unknown traveler was not to leave until the authorities had made a decision on the whole problem. He was served dinner in his room, soon went to sleep. It had been a long day for him, though the door to his room was guarded all night. When they checked in the morning, he and his belongings were completely gone. The only other exit was a ledgeless window high above a busy street. The traveler was gone, never to be heard from again. Which solved the immediate problem for the officials, right? How do we find this lost man's country and what is what is he doing here? But it left a larger problem for the world to discover. Who was the man from Torrid? Did he come from an alternate dimension, as some have guessed? Many websites pondering this even pointed out the initial reports of the matter come from Colin Wilson's book, The Directory of Possibilities, published well before the internet was a thing. So this is not some mere internet story, but a genuine par- paranormal mystery that may never be solved. Maybe paranormal. Um... So, 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. So many things about this are interesting. One thing that jumps out at me is that he says, my country has existed for a thousand years, yet he's still traveling by airport. So the alternate universe, the alternate reality, alternate dimension, seems like the most, the most plausible thing here. He's what in, do you mean he still travels by airport? You're really far away from the mic. I can't really hear you that well. Um, what does that mean? Well, what I'm saying is... He, he literally got on an airplane and flew there. You, if he was going to freak out about the technology, he would have probably done it then, right? No, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, he's not from the future. He's from now, but in an alternate universe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying... He, what I'm saying is, like, I think he's from a, just a... It was, it was cross dimensions. He got put into the wrong... time mm -hmm. <laughs> but same same time just in a different dimension and so uh i don't know what do you think what do you think yeah that's exactly what i think i love that i think it's so cool and he had a passport from the country torrid right that stumped officials right that they were like what is this country yeah and the fact that he was also they there was no body at the at the base of that building he didn't jump out and kill himself right yeah where did he go did he find the portal and go back to his, his proper dimension? I don't... If, for someone like that, that doesn't seem like he even knew that he had shifted dimensions. Obviously, this was an accident. So somebody came to pick up the pieces, and it's called the Orville. I feel like Jason... Uh, okay, but imagine. No, I'm serious. Imagine if this was you. I know. Imagine if this was you, right? Or may, may, imagine this was me. I go to the airport tomorrow. I'm like, hey, I, I got to go to Minneapolis. And they're just like, mini what? And I'm like, right here, Minneapolis. And I point to the map and it's called Ergel Gru. And I'm like, that's not where that is. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what do you mean Minneapolis? What are you even going for? And I'm like, the Super Bowl. And they're like, the Super Bowl hasn't happened in hundreds of years. And I'm just like. What are you talking about? No, it wouldn't be hundreds of years. So it would st everything would be the same. Yeah, but or just... the Super Bowl doesn't exist. Or what is yeah. the Super Bowl? Um, I think that for someone that and this is all totally theory, obviously, but for someone that's well, what are you doing? For someone that like switches timelines or dimensions or alternate realities, I don't think that they're aware of it. You know, if people were aware of it, then they would likely have studied it and control it. So. Or try to harness it as a thing. I think anyone that's ever jumped a, a timeline or an al to an alternate dimension has never meant to. It's been an accident. So I don't think he escaped or disappeared. I feel like some other being was like, Ooh, whoops, and just plucked them out and threw him back into his dimension. Or some force of the universe did it. Yeah. Not a person. Or maybe just... he had a limited amount of time to exist in this dimension before he just naturally... Disappeared? Yeah. Like, what if he was gone from both dimensions after this? Totally possible. He accidentally slipped out of his dimension, went to briefly to a different one right parallel to his, and mm -hmm. then was disintegrated because he couldn't be there for that long. It's interesting to think about, like, when it's put in terms of, like, just normal travel, right? Like like I said, like, say I'm going to Minnesota, and uh, no one, nobody knows where Minnesota is, and it's not part of the map. And I'm so, I'm so in like, in my brain, I'm so positive of... Like the fact that that's a real place and I know it exists and that I know I'm going there. Well, it's like the Mandela in, effect on steroids. It's like little things that we remember as Berenstein Bears. Eventually, if you know you, you put your imagination to it, it could become bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. things to where you're like, I swear. But there's that never there been was, real proof. There was of a it, country whatever. called Torrid yeah. near France and Spain, yeah. and then maybe it affects literally everyone. Everyone is on the same page except for you. And you're the only one that's like, y'all don't fucking remember Torrid because that's where I'm from. It's a good way to put it. The Mandela effect on steroids. Yeah. It's like. But maybe that's all that shifting dimensions is. Wow. Wow. That's gotten the gears moving. Right. That's interesting. It's like it's the same life. Everything's the same. Except things are slightly different that to the you point thought. where if they happen Think, long enough, yeah. then it's a larger change like a, a piece of land or a body of water instead of just like the name of a children's book. 
Mm. This was also so. Does that does that does that hold on? I have a question. Then does that mean that we are living in a slightly alternated universe or slightly alternated timeline than the one we might have grown up on? It's totally possible. Um, yeah. Does that explain the Mandela effect? Basically, it doesn't. It doesn't explain. It could. It could in theory, though. It could in theory. Right, like one one linear dimension of time. Not linear. One dimension. Sorry. One. I'm trying to think of the word. What is the word? For, whatever. Um, one dimension of time is us as kids. It was spelled Berenstein Bears. Then we slightly shifted and we're adults. Everything's pretty much the same except now it's Berenstein Bears. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of what you're saying? That's the Mandela effect. Okay. So you're saying this? Okay. This is fucking interesting. Man. Well, for all, so this happened in 1954. Mm-hmm. The country, according to him, had existed for, quote, a thousand or thousands. Um, let me see. Genuinely shocked. Locating where, not surprisingly, uh, might be on the first page. Hold on. What did they say was, was, what did the number thousand come into play? Where was like. He said my country has existed for, he either said, you, I didn't understand if you said a thousand or thousands of years. Almost a thousand years. Okay. So it should have been on the map. So in 1954, that means it's been around since 1854. No. That's a hundred. That's a hundred years. <laughs> it's so been around since... since the 1100s or a thousand. No, like 900. That would be a thousand years. So yeah, almost a thousand. thousand. Oh, so yeah. Less okay. than a thousand. So yeah. Yeah. You had it right then. Okay. So if we have if if in your lifetime you have a Mandela effect that's relatively small like a children's book over the course of a thousand years maybe that's enough Mandela effect for a country to just completely not exist and somehow he shifted a timeline differently at a different time than everyone else did or like got pushed instead of like slowly going through it where you don't realize it maybe when he got on that airplane for him in his current reality it like completely shifted a thousand years worth of Mandela effects for him to fully feel the effects of all the languages are the same. Most of the countries are the same. Airports look country, the same. My country as a whole just doesn't exist. But it was just that day because he had traveled to Japan or he had traveled. He, yeah, he was in Japan's yeah. airport. So he had gotten to Japan from Torrid, likely to him or you know according to him according to him he'd done it before but yeah. that day yeah he like shifted across the time and space continuum to the point where he's so confused his country doesn't even exist anymore imagine the fucking freak out you'd have if you go to the airport and you're just like what in the world do you mean the united states of america is in a country yeah. It says it right here on my passport. I can point to it on a map. I have it on my iPhone. Are you and insane? He Stop. You a, then he shows, he shows you me a map, map without it. Doesn't it. Exist. And I see a room full of officials, government officials, flabbergasted at my passport. Mm-hmm. It's probably just as freaky on both sides. Yeah. I think that he had shifted dimensions or I think timelines. That, I think that's the only. I wish they took a picture of his passport. Yeah, it says it's documented, right? Yeah, it's 1954. They could have taken a picture, right? Yeah. Man, I wish they took a picture of his passport. Show us the Torrid passport. It could totally be in their government documents. They haven't released it. That's possible. I'm just going to do a quick Google search. Torrid passport. What do you think it looked like? Probably just like a passport that said Torrid on it. Good, good guess. <laughs> what? I searched Google image toward passport and it said there, there is no internet connection. <gasps> are we, are we shifting? Is this it? Yeah, I think this is it. Access denied? Dude, what is happening? Okay, I got the picture. It says canceled. There's a big stamp across it that says canceled. So they canceled his Torrid passport? That's rude. Oh, my God. This is wild. Tourist visa. 
19... March 25th, 1999? What, bitch? What is this? I don't think it was the right passport. Maybe there isn't a picture of him. Huh. This might be it. Yeah, I don't know. I could I could look for hours. Anyway, that one's that one's probably the most interesting to me. I like stuff like that. I like stuff like that too, because it's not dark, like nobody disappeared. That you know some guy did, but he's probably fine. I think he's fine. Mr. Torrid. We hope your country wins a million medals in the Olympics. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Representing Torrid. <laughs> Man, that's wild. Um, okay, well, that's going to wrap it up for these um, Unsolved Mysteries. If you guys want us to do more of these, first of all, go on Twitter and thank Invented by Jenna for these because she has an incredible thread of these. Like, yeah. uh, she must have spent so many hours on it. Uh, and we will revisit this for a part two because I genuinely want to do more of these. Yeah, I agree. Um, also, let, let, let me know how wrong I was on every one of these um, in the comments below. How are you wrong? You just I read the story. I don't know. I probably missed something. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I we, like those. Though. Yeah, those are fun. Thank you guys for hanging kind of out. Sad and scary, but sad and scary, interesting. but fun. Interesting. interesting. Well, uh, we'll see you guys next week for another podcast. When my Julie comes home, I will be home. Hopefully, you guys have a wonderful week. And uh, tonight, we will be on Twitch live. Via the power of the internet from the country of Torrid. <laughs> there should be a video game like based on that. It's right. Cool. Uh, like the, the you know, the closing point of the game is like you've made it back to Torrid in your similar timeline. Like the beginning of the game, you open up and you're just getting on a flight to Tokyo and then they detain you or whatever. And then you spend the entire game just trying to figure out how to get back into your timeline. Oh my fucking God. She fucking did. It's pretty sick. That's pretty lit actually. Right? It'd be Down. fun. They should name the next PUBG map Torrid. Torrid! Thank you guys for hanging out. Hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you tonight on Twitch and uh, see you next week. Bye! Bye.